Hey y'all, it's Phil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a book outlet book haul. And I figured I'd do what I've seen a lot of people do, just open them on camera with you. I hadn't done one with book outlet in a while, but it is my birthday month. So with gift cards and everything, I got uh, quite a bit. They, it was one order, but they shipped it in three separate boxes. First, I got a Gold Duggery Pleasant book. This is Midnight, The Clock is Ticking by Derek Landy. This is book 11, so I'm not gonna read the synopsis. I have like the first few books in the series, but I don't like the illustration style of the, like they're pretty and stuff, but I like more like people illustration type things. So this is it. And I got Blark, The Boy Who Didn't Want to Save the World by Dominic Barker. If a great wizard told you that the human race depended on you, would you A, grab some spare socks and set out to save mankind? B, think for a second, then grab some spare socks and set out to save mankind? C, stay at home to look after your grandfather's pigs? Blart chooses C, but actually he doesn't have much choice in the matter. It is up to him to stop evil as old Tab escaping the prison where he has been trapped, deep beneath the ground, for hundreds of years, or else mankind will be doomed. That just sounded so interesting and excited to have that. And then A Boy Called Mouse by Penny Dolan. Mouse loves living on Hanny and Isaac's farm where he can clamber inside the barns and ride horses to his heart's content. Then Mr. Button arrives, a sinister man in a shiny black suit. He takes Mouse away to Grim Merkstone Hall and all that Mouse has left to remind him of his old life is a silver medal finally engraved with the image of a mouse. Mouse cannot know that there are people who want to keep him hidden away, or worse. Frightened and alone, what Mouse does know is that he must get away from Muskstone Hall and fast. Will Mouse be able to both escape from horrible Merkstone Hall and throw off the pursuers who wish him harm? So I loved this cover so much and was very interested by that synopsis, so glad I picked that up. And we have this Switched by Kate Saunders. I have um, a hardback edition of this one, but I just love this cover. No mobiles, no iPads, no way. Flora Fox gets on the train to boarding school and finds herself in 1935. Being trapped in the past at St. Winifred's is a nightmare. She has to speak French at breakfast, wear hideous clothes, and sleep in a freezing dormitory. How will she ever find her way back to the 21st century? So, I love time travel, historical fiction, boarding school. So excited for that. And then another one, I have this duology. I like this cover. I like both covers, but I like this one the most by Kate Saunders also. The Curse of the Chocolate Phoenix. So I'm very excited to have this edition. And then I want a lot of Kathy Cassidy's books. So when I saw this one there, I got this one, Sweet Honey, the Chocolate Box Girls series, I think. Um, I think this is the fifth book in the series, so I'm not gonna read the synopsis. I'm so happy to start getting these. And then I loved F.T. Bradley's most recent uh, middle grade spooky mystery one. And so I saw she had this series, so I, wanted, I picked up this when I saw it on there. This is Double Vision and the Alias Men. This is the third book in that series, so I'm not going to read the synopsis. And it sounded just as interesting and intriguing, so I picked that up. And then a series I've been wanting for quite a while, so I was happy to see this on there. Uh, the Hamish series. This is Hamish and the Never People by Danny Wallace and it's illustrated by Jamie Littler who did a who wrote and illustrated the Frost Heart series I think which I haven't read but and this is the second book so I won't read the synopsis of this one either. It's full of illustrations. Very excited. And then I got I think I got both books so the other book should be in another one of the boxes. Robin Silver Duology. Robin Silver, The Midnight Chimes by Paula Harrison. And they're full of illustrations too. I just love that. Robin Silver is just like you. If you suddenly started seeing creepy creatures everywhere, if you discovered that you were born on the stroke of midnight and were a chime child with special monster hunting powers, would you want to be catapulted headfirst into an extraordinary action-packed adventure? Be careful what you wish for. So happy to finally have this. And I got Princess in Camo, Allie's Bayou Rescue by Missy and Mia Robertson with Jill Osborne. And these just look so 
Good. So, excited to finally start getting them. Demonstrations throughout. Life isn't always easy for 12 year old Allie Caraway in the Louisiana Bayou. Combine her allergies, asthma, and a possible move away from extended family and the family's reality TV show, Carried Away with the Caraways, and Allie has a recipe for potential disaster. On top of everything else is the exciting addition of a new cousin to the group. But Hunter is a 12 year old boy. Allie and her cousins, Kendall, Ruby, and Lola, have never allowed a boy to set foot in their treehouse, the Diva Duck Blind. And if Allie's cousins have any say, they'll keep it that way. So the girl cousins devise a complicated Bayou style initiation for Hunter as he joins the Caraway family. Can Allie, Hunter, and the rest of the girls overcome swampland obstacles, a blackout, and more to keep the family together? That sounds so great. So, can't wait to read that. Another one I've been wanting forever. The Wild Folk. By Sylvia V. Lindstedt. I guess I don't know if I'm saying that right. In the land of Farallon, city boy Tim and country girl Comfrey are guided on a quest by two young hares. Their task is to save the mystical wild folk from destruction, but the wild folk don't trust humans, and the children face impossible challenges and meet extraordinary creatures as they battle to save the land they love. A timeless and magical fantasy adventure. I love this cover. I've been wanting it forever, so I was so happy to see it on there in the synopsis. It's short, but it hooks me. And I got Journey to America, Escaping the Holocaust of Freedom by Sonia Levitan. And this is a 50th anniversary edition with a new afterword from the author. I just love this cover. 1938, Lisa Plott and her family know something dangerous is happening in Germany. Suddenly, there are more and more restrictions for Jews. Yellow stars they have to wear, schools they cannot attend, things they are not allowed to do. When their neighbors are arrested for petty reasons, the Plotts realize they have to escape. Forbidden to bring money or possessions out of the country, Lisa's father secretly leaves for America, planning to work until he can send for his family. But when conditions in Germany worsen, Lisa, her mother, and her sisters flee to Switzerland and wait, surviving on what little they have in a, in a continent hurtling toward war. Inspired by Sonia Levantine's own experience of fleeing Germany as a child, this movie novel chronicles one family's bravery in the face of aggression and apathy. Mm, based on her own experience, that's just going to be a powerful read. I'm so happy to finally have this. Another one I've been wanting forever, <laughs> and I always am reminded that I wanted it because a book like you would, on YouTube I'll just, and on Instagram, I'll link her channel below. Um, she has talked about this a lot. I don't know if she enjoyed it that much when she actually read it, but uh, it's The Door by the Staircase by Katherine Marsh. I'm just so intrigued by this one. Twelve-year-old Mary Hayes can't stand her orphanage for another night, but when an attempted escape through the stovepipe doesn't go as well as she hoped, Mary fears she'll be stuck in the Buffalo Asylum for Young Ladies forever. The very next day, a mysterious woman named Madame Z appears at the orphanage requesting to adopt Mary, and the matron all too happy to get the girl off her hands. Soon Mary is fed a hearty meal, dressed in a clean new nightgown, and shown a soft bed with blankets piled high. She can hardly believe she isn't dreaming. But when Mary begins to explore the strange nearby town with the help of her new friend Jacob, she learns a terrifying secret about Madame Z's true identity. If Mary's not careful, her new home might just turn into a nightmare. So excited to finally have that. Then I got Wilderness by Roddy Doyle. And J.K. Rowling, blur the front. Roddy Doyle is an absolute genius. Sometimes it's parents who need saving. Tom and Johnny are on a husky expedition in Finland. Every minute is a thrill until the night their mother's sled disappears in a swirling snowstorm. Back home in Ireland, Grain prepares to confront the mother who abandoned her years before. When you've lost someone, how do you get them back? Doesn't say much again, but very intrigued. And with a blurb from her like that, very excited. And I got The Light in the Lake by Sarah R. Bowman. So many of these have been on my list forever. Excited to finally be getting them for a great price. 12-year-old Addie knows she should stay away from Maple Lake. After all, her twin brother Amos drowned there only a few months ago. But it's crisp, clear water runs in Addie's veins, and the notebook Amos left behind, filled with clues about a mysterious magical creature that might live in the lake's inky blue depths, keep calling her back. Unable to resist Maple Lake secrets, Addie accepts a young scientist position studying the lake for the summer and enlists the lead researcher's son, Ty, to help her investigate the creature. As they track down Amos's clues, they also learn that Maple Lake is in trouble, and the source of the pollution might be close to home. Soon, Addie finds herself caught between science and magic, family and nature, and grief and hope. Can she find a way forward while staying true to herself? It sounds like a powerful read, important, like the loss of a sibling. 
science. Maybe with a little magic. Happy to finally have it. I got the Ether Vero Rising by Laura Lois E. Monari. The Fiercest of Warriors. Vero Whelan always suspected he was different from others his own age, ever since his childhood attempts to fly, but he never could have predicted the truth or how much his life was about to change. Soon after his 12th birthday, Vero learns he is a guardian angel and is abruptly transported to the ether, the spiritual realm that surrounds the earth. Yet before he can be counted among these first warriors, Vero must learn to master his growing powers, competing with other angels in training and battling demonic creatures known as Malchers, as well as mythical creatures such as the Levithian. Until his instruction is complete, Vero needs to alternate between the ether and his regular life. If he survives training and accepts his destiny, a destiny he did not choose, he must leave everything behind, including his family and the life he loves. Meanwhile, an evil is growing. The Malchers are rising, and Vero appears to be their target. That sounds right up my alley. Maybe like a darker up in middle way. And it's like he has to go through trials, kind of, seems like, and learning. and Very excited. And this is the second Robin Silver book. Robin Silver, The Darkest Dream. Paula Harrison. I, mean, I already read the synopsis of the first book, so it's the second. Illustrations in this one, too. Excited to have them both. Got a Samantha Sanderson series book, and this is off the record by Robin Carroll. This is the third book in the series, so I'm not going to read the synopsis, but these just sounded so incredible and right up my alley, and just they just look like a lot of fun, so I was happy to get that. And I got Soon by Morris Gleitzman. Yeah, this is the fifth book in the series, so I definitely won't be reading the synopsis. But this one especially sounds like a Nazi Germany World War II story. So, always excited to get more of those. This is the second in a series, so I'm not going to read the synopsis, but the Secret Cookie Club series. This is Campfire Cookies by Martha Freeman. I love food with middle grade. And these just sound so cozy and intriguing and fun. So excited to have that. I got Thunderstruck by Ally Spark. Getting struck by lightning isn't exactly the way Alicia and Theo would have chosen to get out of sports day, but at least surviving the strike makes them notice Doug and Lizzie, a pair of young ghosts. Together, the foursome creates Strike Club. Sorry, you can't join unless several thousand volts have skipped through your nervous system. But what can it mean when ragged, faceless entities keep looming by the windows at school? Not all ghosts are friendly like Doug and Lizzie. Are these phantoms really messengers of doom for all the kids at Beechwood Jr.? Not if Strike Club has anything to do with it. I was just so hooked by that synopsis, so. Such a fascinating idea. Excited. And there's two books in the Bella Broomstick series by Lou Kunzler. This is the second and third book, so I won't read the synopsis. Or the third and fourth book. I can't remember which one. Halloween Havoc. Strictly Spells. And a witchy story. Looks like a lot of fun. Illustrations throughout. Yes, please. So happy I found these. This is a continuation of the Five Children series by E. Nesbitt. So this might be the fifth if you count them in order. Even though this is a different, this is by Kate Saunders. Five Children on the Western Front. So it's like a continuation, I think. And but Kate Saunders take on it. Costa Book Awards winner, 2014. I'm not gonna read the synopsis since it is a continuation of that one series. I think I have that series too. And I've always wanted to read E. Nesbitt's works and then, so that's why I have a lot of them. <laughs> and I've always heard the best things. So i that happy to add this to that. And I have the second book in the Trouble Twister series, The Monster, so I won't read the stuff. It's by Garth Nix and Sean Williams. And I just love these editions. They just sound incredible and I've always heard great things about Garth Nix, so I was happy to see this on there. The third book in the series I showed earlier, the Princess and Camo series by Missy and Mia Robertson with Jill Osborne. This is Dog Show Disaster. Happy to have another one of those. And this is the first book, uh, The Curse of the Chocolate Phoenix. I showed earlier. I said I wanted these editions. This is the first book of that duology. And this is The Whiz Pop Chocolate Shop by Kate Sanders. Oz and Lily's family have moved house into a chocolate shop. It's the perfect home apart from the small fact that it's haunted. When they discover enchanted chocolate hidden in the shop, they realize that the Whiz Pop chocolate shop is hiding more than one spooky secret. Before too long, evil villains are after them, keen to get their hands on an ancient recipe for dangerous magic. 
Can Alice, Lily, and their magical cat save their new home and its priceless chocolate mystery? Living in a chocolate shop, a villain, a mystery, a magical cat, haunted, I mean, food. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then I got The Pearl in the Attic by Karen McCombie. I have several of her books and there's still several I want to get, so I'm so happy to see this on there. Scarlet finds the truth can be stranger than fiction. While sorting through her grandma's lifelong possessions, Scarlet discovers a novel imagining the life of a girl just like her. But as she reads about Ruby's life in Edwardian London, Scarlet begins to realize that Ruby could be real and that the mystery in the story is still unspooling from the past to the present. Very intrigued by that and the book, the stories, and it's just a very interesting synopsis. So excited. Another one I've had my own forever, and this is a naked hardback. The Root of Magic by Kathleen Benner Dubel. no synopsis it just says willow feels a strange sense of unease creep up her back and tingle run down her spine she thinks of all the odd things she's seen since arriving Topher mentioning a secret and willow knows in that instant that this little town of kismet is not what it seems that something is going on here that is not normal it's not a synopsis really but enough to get you to want to want to know what's going on so happy to finally have this one another one i'm so happy sister land by sala sumuka the naked hardback a beautiful naked hardback. Another one that's not really a synopsis, but something flew above Alice's head. Alice was about to give the dragonfly a happy greeting when suddenly it began to grow. First sprouted on its head, the antenna transformed into ears, and the wings folded along its back. Its enormous golden insect eyes turned small and focused, and within moments, the golden eyes of a wolf stared into hers. Alice was so shocked she didn't think to be afraid. Then she heard his low, slightly growling voice. Get up, it said. This isn't a dream. I mean... Who wouldn't want to read that after <laughs> just reading that uh, thing on the back? So happy. And then I got another Skullduggery Pleasant book. This is Resurrection by Derek Landy. So book 10. It's another of the illustration style that I like. So happy to add that to the collection. And I got A Dragon's Guide to Care and Feeding of Humans by Lawrence Yep and Joanne Ryder. I've been wanting this for so long. Illustrations too. Feisty dragon Miss Drake has a new pet human, Precocious Winnie. Oddly enough, Winnie seems to think Miss Drake is her pet, a ridiculous notion. Miss Drake has her work cut out for her if she's ever going to train Winnie to be the perfect companion. That sounds so good. I'm so excited. And then I got a swirl of ocean by Melissa Sarno. So another naked hardback. It's a clear evening as I walk to shore. There's still some time before the sun sets, but it's cold, which means the ocean will feel warmer, even if the fall season is picking up speed. I wear my two small bikini, with the bottoms bunching up and the back strap digging into my flesh. I march in fast, my knees above the surface. Then I wade in, and the coolness shocks my bare stomach. My whole body shivers and goose pimples, but I know the faster you get in, the faster you get used to being cold, until your body warms right up. I swim out to where the sandbar drops away. I can tell by the way the water darkens, and I let my feet slip over the line. Some people hate knowing they can't touch the bottom, but I love the feeling of emptiness beneath my toes. It feels like a world of beginnings with no end. So another one. Must be a naked hardback thing. <laughs> Not that really a synopsis. But the ocean knows what we don't. Uh, some of y'all may know, but I absolutely love the ocean. I grew up at the beach on the East Coast. And when we moved away, when I was 8th grade, I think, it destroyed me. My... I always say my soul is at peace when I'm at the ocean. When you hear it, you smell it, you see it, there's nothing like the ocean. It's just, I love it. So, excited to have this. And another Kate Saunders book that I got because I like this cover. And it was so cheap. I think it was like $2. Magic Calamity by Kate Saunders. This is no ordinary fairy story. Tom is in shock. His dad has just been kidnapped by killer fairies. Luckily, he has three fairy godmothers to help him. The only problem is two of them are hardened criminals and one is just plain rubbish. Can their mad magic help save Tom's dad? That sounds so good. I showed the cover. I didn't even know. So happy to have this one. And I have another Ally Sparks book, Night Speakers. The battle between good and evil starts at 1.34 a.m. every night. 1.34 a.m. It's always 1.34 a.m. 
Every night it's the same. Without fail and without explanation, at 1.34 a.m. on the dot, Elena, Matt, and Tima wake up. It's messing them up and fracturing their lives until they venture out into the dark and find each other. And there they discover something remarkable. Each of them has the power to communicate with animals, which is just as well because they're going to need all the help they can get. Something else is out there in the shadows, watching them, waiting for the right moment to strike. Her books just sound so different and just so excited. And they have the most beautiful covers. I can't wait to get more too. And then I got book two and the, see, the, I think it's just the William Winton series. This is William Winton and the Secret Portal by Bobby Pierce. I've always wanted this series, so I'm happy I at least got the second book. Can't read the synopsis since it is the second book. I think this is the second in this series or duology by Abby Longstaff. This is How to Bewitch a Wolf. I think the first one is How to Catch a Witch. So I'll read the synopsis. Another one I've been wanting for so long. So happy. These just sound wolf witch. They just sound great. Then I got the first book in the Lost and Found series by Kathy Cassidy, who was the author I talked about before. And this is Love from Lexi. Have you ever been lost? I have. Ever since Lexi's mom vanished, Lexi's world hasn't stopped spinning. A new home, a new school, even a new family. But Lexi never gives up hope that her mom will come back, and she writes her letters every day to tell her all about her new life. There's plenty to tell. The new group of misfits she calls friends, the talent for music she never knew she had, and the gorgeous boy with blue eyes and secrets to hide. But her letters remain unanswered, and she's starting to feel more alone than ever. Lexi's about to learn that sometimes you need to get lost in order to be found. I love that. So, excited to have the first one. And I have Jonesy Flux and the Grey Lesion by James Prey. And the Naked Hardback looks the same. Jonesy Archer's second to last day on Canary, sta Canary Station was business as usual. Stay safe, stay solid, and bring back some loot. Jonesy knew to follow her crew leader's orders and was good at it. Salvaging all what remained of the broken station came easily to her. Plus, the work was exhausting and being tired at the end of the day helped a little when she started to think about missing her family who evacuated three years ago, believing she hadn't survived the attack that damaged the station. But as her crew leader said, survival was just a problem you kept solving until you were safe. She knew deep down that one day someone would come rescue her and her friends. On Josie's last day on Canary Station, she sp spots a ship out of the window and rushes to activate the beacon in a forbidden section of the wreckage, accidentally unleashing strange powers and summoning back the one thing the survivors hoped to never see again, the Grey Legion, the ones responsible for attacking the station in the first place. Jonesy manages to hide, but the rest of her friends are taken, leaving Jonesy all alone. She must find a way off the station, rescue her friends, and reunite with her family, all while learning how to harness her powers. Now it's Jonesy's first day of a journey to discover the kind of person she really wants to be. That sounds amazing. So happy I found that. And then I got the first book, the series, The Secrets of the X Point series. This is Pursued by Gary Urry. Thanks to their scientist parents, Axel Jack and Daisha Tandala have what no one else in the world has, the ability to go anywhere in seconds with the push of a button on their geoports. But the geoports come at a high price. The billionaire Dr. Elena Hatch wants the units for his own agenda, namely world domination, and he'll stop at nothing to get them. When he sends his henchmen, the pursuers, after the geoports, Axel and Daisha find themselves on the run across the globe. Alex and Daisha need to destroy the geoports before the pursuers can get their hands on them. To do that, they need the help of the mysterious Magnus Solus, but all they have are partial coordinates to find him or her. As the pursuers close in, Axel and Daisha make a mad dash to escape and end up separated. Now they must risk everything to find each other again, reach Magnus Solus, and save the world. That sounds fantastic. I'm so happy I found this on there too. And lastly, I got one I've been eyeing for a while, and I'm so happy that it came with the sprayed edge of Lightning Girl, Alicia Dixon. This is the first in the series. Then, the little illustrations too. Aurora Beam has just had some big news. Her mom is a secret superhero and now Aurora's own powers are starting to show. Sparks of lightning are shooting out of her fingertips. It's a lot to take in. She can't even do a cartwheel properly. How can she be a superhero? Then an evil supervillain pops up with a plot to steal a very precious stone. Can Aurora save the day, helped or more likely hindered by her fierce friends and a very snooty ostrich? So these just sound like a lot of fun girl power and they're just beautiful too so very excited hey Dean bell there was one hiding in the box that i didn't see the return to the railway children by lou quinsler 
and it's a sequel to the much-loved classic The Railway Children. So since it is a continuation of that classic series, I won't read the synopsis, but very happy to have this. I've been wanting it for a while. I'm so excited because, as I said before, Eden has a bit uh, of a few of her books, and I want to read so many of them, and so I'm excited to read those those books and then The Railway Children and then read this author's take on that or continuation. So very excited to have gotten this one. All right. Hey y'all, editing bell again. <laughs> it's the next day and December 14th and uh, I thought all of the book outlet order had come but apparently there was one more box still. One order, they mailed it in four boxes apparently. So I wanted to go over that. Uh, book two in this series, it's The Secret War by Matt McLeish. The series I've had my eye on for quite a while so I was happy to see it on there. I got Naked Mole Rat Saves the World by Karen Rivers. 12 year old Kit with a small K likes shopping at the flea market with her best friend Clem, roller skating, climbing to the roof to look at the star stars, and volunteering at an animal shelter. Until suddenly she has a really big, really strange secret that makes life more complicated than she's prepared for. Sometimes, without warning, she turns into a tiny naked mole rat. It first happened as Kit watched Clem fall and get hurt during a performance with her acrobatic troupe family on TV. Since then, transformations keep coming. Kit can't tell Clem because Clem hasn't been herself after the accident. She's mad and gloomy and keeping a secret of her own, the real reason she fell. Months later, Kit and Clem still haven't figured out how to deal with all the ways they have changed, both inside and out. Somehow, Kit has to save the day, but she's no hero, and turning into a naked mole rat isn't a superpower. Or is it? I'm just fascinated by that synopsis and very intrigued to see what happens. And I already showed you a couple books in the Bella Broomstick series that I had gotten. This is another one in that series, School Spells. And this is another one in that series that I just showed you, The End of Infinity by Matt. Okay, and this is book three. And a series I showed earlier, an Ether series by Loris Molinari. This is book three in that series. This is The Dragon's Descent. Also another one in a series I showed earlier. I showed book one earlier. Blart Two, The Boy Who Wanted The Boy Who Was Wanted Dead or Alive or Both by Dominic Barker. My Family and Other Ghosts by Lou Kunzler. Got a lot of books by this author in this haul. I hate stickers. Illustrations throughout. Ivy and Ash didn't expect to be visited by the ghost of their grandpa Digby, who they've never met. They definitely didn't expect him to ask them to come and run the family hotel, Grave Grange, which happens to be very haunted. Between some unlikely guests, their grandpa Digby going missing, missing, and one ghostly dribbling hound, Ivy and Ash are faced with chaos and mayhem. Can they save the hotel and their new spooky friends before they lose their home for good? It sounds so good. So excited. And book one in this series, I think it's the Atherton series, The House of Power by Patrick Carmen. Be on your guard. Everyone knows the rule. It is forbidden to climb the cliffs that separate Atherton's three realms. You are being watched. But Edgar seems made for climbing, and while secretly sealing those treacherous rock walls, he discovers a book eerily addressed to him, and within its pages is revealed the astonishing truth about his home. At once, an Id idyllic satellite world and a sinister experiment created by a man gone mad trying to save a dying Earth. Atherton faces imminent destruction. As Edgar tries to unlock the book's secrets, the elite highlands and the land of Edgar's humble home below begin to collapse into the vast wasteland at the bottom of Atherton, and the world erupts into chaos. But Atherton's fate may be the key to discovering his own dark past and a destiny unfulfilled. And so, an incredible journey begins. I do have that. And there's book five in the Tom Swift series. I didn't realize how short they were. In Inventor's Academy, The Spybot Invasion by Victor Ackleton. Like I said, it's the fifth book, so I won't read the synopsis, but I've been eyeing them for a while. I got the first book in the Trebizon. His first term at Trebizon by Anne Digby. Come on, I'll give you a guided tour. New girl Rebecca Mason arrives at Trebizon, the famous boarding school, after everyone else has already made friends. Lonely and anxious to prove herself, Rebecca writes something for the school magazine, which unexpectedly triggers a row, and half the school turns against her. Luckily, she discovers she has friends after all, the best friends any new girl could hope for. Boarding school, gorgeous cover. Snap that up. Got Dawn Undercover by Anna Dale. 
When Don Buckle is given a top secret job at PSST, Pursuit of Scheming Spies and Traitors, she has no idea she is up to the task of tracking down the wicked spy gone bad, Murdo Meek. Taking on a new identity, Don goes undercover in the sleepy village of Cherry Bentley. Can she piece together the incredible riddle before, before Murdo Meek does away with his hostage? And will she be able to outwit this master criminal to keep herself out of harm's way? Read this tremendously funny action-packed story and meet one of the most unlikely and lovable spy catchers to, fe to feature in a book for a very long time. That sounds incredible. Right up my alley. Another series I've been wanting for so long. This is book five in the Eric Rex series by Kaza Kingsley. It's this The Secret of Ashana. This is the fifth book. I won't read a synopsis. Excited. That Dangerous Deception by Peg Kayret. It started as a class assignment. Emmy Rushford convinces her classmates to help two children in need for a sixth grade community service project. But the task turns perilous quickly when the children and their mother vanish. Bent on figuring out what happened to them, Emmy finds herself dealing with a car crash, a belligerent neighbor, a cat thrown into a dumpster, and a ring of thieves. To protect her mother's job, she's keeping her search a secret, but as the risk grows, she has to decide if, there's more, if it's more dangerous to stay silent or involve the police. I'm very excited for that. It's another Karen McCombie book that I've been wanting for a while. Is catching falling stars. The Blitz, 1941. The world is at war and London is no longer a safe place to be. Glory and her little brother have been sent to the countryside, far from everything they know and love. To Glory, being an evacuee feels worse than the threat of falling bombs. The woman they must live with is cold and unwelcoming, and the village children are just as unfriendly. And even in the country, they're not safe from enemy planes. But what Glory doesn't know is that her life is about to change in ways she never imagined. It was like a powerful, important story. So, very excited have another of these. And book four in the Tom Swift Adventures Academy, the virtual fandom, Victor Appleton. And another Bella Broomstick. Excited for that. Then I have the second book. I can't remember what it's called, but when it came out, I didn't know it was the second book, and the covers don't go together at all. So I've been wanting the, this one so I could read that one. This is Katie Birchall's author and Morgan Charmley series, Teen Witch. I don't know Teen Witch or Mar Morgan Charmley is the series name, but so excited to have the first book. It's a day Morgan Charmley has been dreaming of after years of trying to prove she's got control over her witch powers. She's finally allowed to go to a normal school, but will she be able to make friends and fit in with the non-magical teenagers? Can she resist using her powers to make herself popular or supersize her dancing skills to star in the upcoming talent show? So very excited to finally have this. I got the third in this series. I have another book in the series, so I was glad to add another one. Uh, it's The Marsh Road Mysteries. This one's Spooks and Scooters by Elaine Caldicott. Now these just look so fun and right up my alley, so I'm excited to add that. And then I got what says is the first in the series. I think it's the only one out now, though. Terror Train, Wigot's Wonderful Wax World by Terry Deary. A stolen phone, a door to an old wax world, a mysterious tower, a girl in a glass case. Going to Wigot's wonderful wax world might be the worst decision that boy has ever made. No, no, getting on the terror train, that's the worst decision he's ever made. That doesn't say a lot, but it hooks me, so very excited. First in the Villain School series, I think is the name of the series. Good Curses Evil, Stephanie S. Sanders. And then, of course, a Villain School, Good Evil. My favorite series is a school of good and evil, so... Very excited that I found this. I'd never heard of it before. It just sounds like a fun series. Rune Drexler, a warlock who can't even escape detention. Countess Jezebel Dracula, a vampire with a sweet tooth for hot cocoa. Big, ba big Bad Wolf Jr., a wolf who would save Red Riding Hood if he met her. At Master Dreadthorn School for Wayward Villains, Rune, Jez, and Wolf Jr. are learning how to be bad. To test their evil doer skills, they are assigned a plot. It's like a sport competition for villains in training. In one week, they must kidnap a princess, steal a baby, find a henchman, overthrow a kingdom. It's impossible even before they set out into the Forgotten Forest. But then the plot starts miraculously falling into place. Only one problem. To really succeed, our fiendish friends need to act like bad guys. And right now, they're looking suspiciously heroic. That sounds so good. So excited. Okay, back to the video again. <laughs> Alright, y'all, that's all for this book out the hall. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you heard of any of these? Do they sound good to you? Have you read any of them? Let me know in the comments. Oh, and I'm wearing my Britney shirt today since she's free finally and she just had her birthday. She just turned 40 and I have my birthday 
a week from yesterday will be my birthday, so next Sunday. <laughs> and I'll be 40 right along with her. I really have been watching her since the start. <laughs> so, happy birthday to Brittany. She'll never see this. All the illustrators will be listed below, as usual. If you would like to subscribe, I would love that if you want to. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.